Hi, everyone. Just going to give everyone a minute to, to trickle in here. So sit tight. All right, I think we can get things started here. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar today on calculating event-related emissions. Today, we're gonna be walking you through our events calculator, which is a feature that we've built to quantify emissions from things like corporate events. This is a tool that is great for anyone who is trying to track and reduce the emissions of their events over time, or people who are looking to offset the emissions of their events uh, from the outset. In terms of what we'll cover today, we'll start with a little introduction and background about the feature, and then we'll move into uh, a demo where we'll actually just show you, walk you through an example of what it's like to use the calculator. Lastly, as a reminder, if you have any questions, there is the Q&A button at the bottom, so feel free to drop them in there, and we've set aside some time at the end to go through them. I'm Nick Lusontag, Senior Manager for Sustainability here at Sustain Life. A lot of what I do here is developing the methodologies and math that go into the calculators and features um, within our platform. A big part of that is ensuring that those methodologies are consistent with best practices and the latest and greatest standards. Um, and that's what we've tried to do here with the events calculator. And today I'm joined by Hannah Garfing. Hannah, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Hannah Garfing. I'm a director of product at Sustain Life. I work with Nick and the sustainability team, as well as the design and engineering teams um, to create the application that we will be demoing in this webinar. Great. Thank you. So just some background. I want to set the stage for the calculator and talk a little bit about what are the best use cases for it, what sources and what sources of our emissions are covered. Also give some recommendations for um, if you're planning an event, how to use this calculator. So first off, in terms of what are the best events um, that this calculator is for, it's really intended for corporate events that are lasting at least half a day. So things like conferences, company offsites, uh, maybe even expos. And uh, we say more than half a day because, you know, if you're having an event that's only a few hours, then a lot of these emission sources are not going to exist. You won't have uh, long distance travel or overnight lodging for people who are coming from out of town and maybe not even, even food. Uh, in terms of what is covered, as I just mentioned, for attendees that are coming from out of town, we cover their long distance travel as well as their overnight stays if they're staying in hotels. We calculate the emissions from the venue itself, uh, whether that venue is your own or a third party venue. We cover the supply chain emissions of any food or beverages that you're serving, as well as any physical products that you're procuring. Uh, so whether that's swag like gift bags or things like lanyards or programs that you're printing. And then finally, we cover emissions from the waste that is ultimately produced by the event. And as a final note, I just want to mention, you know, if you're planning an event and you want to use this calculator, this calculator is really great to be paired with a survey that you're sending to your attendees ahead of time, as well as paired with engagement with your venue host. And the reasons for that are so that you can collect some primary data to plug into the calculator. You're going to get you know, much more accurate outputs if you actually have some a sense of really how far people traveled to attend the event, what are the different modes that they took to get there as well as information from the venue host in terms of how much energy was consumed during the event and how much waste the event actually produced. You'll see uh, during the demo that we can absolutely uh, fill those gaps if you don't have that information, um, but you can also provide that primary data if you do have it. And with that, uh, let's move into the demo. I will stop sharing here. <clears throat> And I'm now sharing. Can you see my screen? Yep. Wonderful. 
Um, so this is our application, this is Sustain Life. We have broken the app into three main sections, our measure section, where you're going to track your ESG metrics, our manage section, where we help you lower your emissions, um, and our report section, where you can report out on the categories that we allow you to track. Um, we're gonna focus on the measure and report section for today's demo. If you click on the measure section, the events area is actually on the bottom right. You're gonna land on an events landing page, which is just gonna allow you to see your events history. So anything that you've actually already put into the application. Um, so these are some events that I've already put in here. So you can see the event name, the date, any emissions total associated with the event, any offsets that I might've purchased, which we'll get into shortly. Um, and then a status in terms of if I can purchase offsets, if I've already offset um, a portion of the event and I can wanna offset the remainder, or if maybe I've already um, completed an offset purchase and now I have a carbon neutral event, which is when you actually purchase offsets to cover the entirety of the event. And, and we'll show you that flow um, after we create our new event right now, which you can do just by clicking this new event button in the top right. So we start on this page, um, just to orient you, you're always gonna have on the left side, um, a breakout of the categories and we're gonna see check marks as we complete each of these categories. So it's just you know, a running total essentially over here. And you're gonna have an actual running total of your emissions associated with these, each of these categories on the right side. Um, so we're gonna start with the event overview, which actually does also cover lodging. So first I'm gonna give the event a name. I'm gonna call this the 420 event. Um, I'm going to say that there's 100 attendees and maybe 50% of them traveled from out of town. Um, as Nick was mentioning before, this is really good information that you can capture in that attendee survey that you're sending out before the event actually occurs. Um, so you can start inputting, you know, real numbers if you're getting this back. Um, this is a single day event, so I'm going to click that. And then in terms of the location of the event, we do allow for international events. I'm just going to put one in for the United States for today. Um, and with that, I can just type in any address. And perfect. And then you'll see an electricity provider down here, which Nick can give a little bit more of an explanation on. Yeah. And so we're asking for the location, uh, not just so we can pull the electricity provider, but so we can pull all of the correct location specific emission factors that we're going to need for all the downstream calculations you're about to see. Uh, I also want to add a note here that we have this note that says the tool is best suited for events in the US and Canada. And really what that is for is if you're using any of our estimators on the following screens, those are all gonna be based on North American assumptions. Um, if you have primary data and your event is outside of uh, the US or Canada, great, you're gonna get great numbers. Uh, if you are using the estimators outside of the US and Canada, just know that some of those estimates are gonna be based on things like US travel patterns and US consumption patterns. Perfect. And before I go into the next section, which is travel, I just want to show you again, um, you now have a lodging number or an emissions number associated with lodging, which is over here in the top right. So I'm going to go to the next section, which again, you'll now see a check mark here. And for travel, we're estimating, you know, the out of town attendings, or as Nick said, if you have the actuals, you can put that in here. Um, so I'll start putting in some actuals. Yeah. So we, we break it out into a few different modes. You know, we have car, train, and then we break flights out into a few different uh, halls, which are different distance buckets of flights, because um, longer flights have uh, disproportionately actually lower emissions per mile than uh, shorter flights. Uh, so that's why we break it out. If you have exact data, as Hannah said, you can put it in there. And if you don't, you can estimate here just roughly, you know, what percentage of my out-of-town attendees took a car versus a plane versus a train. And then we'll, um, we'll, we'll estimate the distance from that and calculate the emissions off of that. Perfect. And then we'll go to venue where again, we allow for estimates or more accurate inputs. Mm -hmm. And here we use benchmarking data for um, assembly and event buildings to, to calculate uh, energy consumption based on area. And again, if you've worked with your, your venue host and you have exact uh, data, data from them in terms of how much electricity was consumed during the event or how much uh, gas was consumed during the event, then that's great. You can give us that, that information here. The next section is food. Again, another section that's really um, useful to have that survey that you're sending out to your attendees beforehand in case there's any dietary preferences or restrictions. Um, we asked you a series of yes or no questions specifically around alcoholic drinks, um, and providing meals, as well as an estimate percentage of the meals that contain meat. 
So for this, I'll say 50%. We did provide snacks um, and then a number um, associated with swag or gift bags. Yeah, and all of these different types of beverages and meals, they all have different uh, emissions implications. You know, alcoholic drinks have a slightly higher footprint than non-alcoholic drinks. And then certainly meals containing meat have a much higher footprint than those that are vegetarian. And so that's why we we break it out in this way. Um, and then lastly, as Hannah mentioned, the, the swag at the bottom, that's to cover any any physical products that you have, are producing uh, as a part of the event or handing out to your guests. So yeah, gifts, lanyards, programs, all of those things. Our last section is waste, where again, we do allow you, if you know the actual totals or the actual um, amounts to input something here um, to be more accurate and specific. But if you don't, you can just say that you don't know the actual amount, but you do know maybe that um, there was landfill trash and recycling and compost at the venue and at this event in general. And that's your last section here. So I'm gonna click finish. You'll again, see your total here. Um, and what happens is you're taken back to the event history landing page. Your, your new event's gonna pop up at the top um, with all the information from before, it's all saved here. And you're gonna see on the far right in status that I had purchase offsets. So when you go into the purchase offsets flow, um, you have the opportunity to make this a carbon neutral event, which is what we call it, which is when you purchase offsets um, to basically offset the entire event. That would be 100%. If you don't want to do 100%, we do have a sliding scale here that you can use where you can choose a percentage that's, you know, whatever best suits your company. Um, whatever percentage you select, you'll always see a number associated with it here on the right side. So if you're looking for an actual amount, you'll get that here too. Um, once you've selected what percentage you do want to offset, we have a variety of offset projects that are verified and certified that you can choose from below. If you're curious about a specific project, you can click on the I icon here and get information about that project, total inventory amount, et cetera. So definitely take a look at this. Um, I might as well, I'll select this project um, and I'll go through the checkout flow. I'm not gonna make an actual purchase on the demo, um, but I will show you, you would just, if you have a new payment, you can put that in here. If you have an existing payment, you can select one that you already have on file. Um, and then you would just complete your offset purchase. You'd then get, um, a confirmation screen as well as a confirmation email. So all of the offset project information, which you'd see here on the right, would also appear in that email um, and on that screen, which is very helpful. Um, if you were to actually make that a 100% um, carbon offset purchase, you would then get a yellow pill here that says carbon neutral event. Um, the last page I'm gonna show you is actually in the report section where we have breakouts by category and we have an events report where it's a summary of your events, emissions, um, and a category breakout. So at the top, you're going to see summary information like a total number of events, um, a total emissions number, total offsets purchase, as well as a percent to total that has been offset. You'll see a pie chart on the right with your emissions breakdown by category. So you can see here that the majority of my emissions are coming from venue and then from travel. And then you'll see all of your events that you've um, input into the tool um, in this table below where we break out again by start date, end date, your total emissions, and then emissions by category. And then we give you your offsets purchase as well as the percent of the event that was offset. Um, so you can always do additional tracking and analysis in this area. And that concludes the demo portion of this webinar. So I will turn Great. it over to Nick for Q&A. Great. And looks like we have some, some questions trickling in here. Let's see here. Uh, Kathleen asks, for swag items, why focus on dollar value versus content? Sustainable products tend to cost more than other products. How does focus on cost over quality slash content impact data? This, this is a great question. And what you're, you're actually getting at a broader challenge with especially scope three accounting. Uh, when we use cost to estimate emissions, that's called a spend-based approach, and it certainly has its drawbacks, uh, one of which is that if you're paying more for a sustainable product, you'll actually calculate greater emissions. Uh, part of the, the challenge with this is we're trying to balance you know, something that is going to be uh, accessible for what kind of data that you have and can work off of um, versus, you know, versus that accuracy uh, challenge. The other way that we would do this if we weren't doing a spend-based approach would be an, sort of an LCI-based approach where we actually need you to essentially collect 
life cycle information about those products that you're buying or calculate that within our app. And we're talking about actually that would require a whole other tool. So part of it is, you know, um, making some concessions so that you can get an emissions number that's immediately usable. And then lastly, I would I would remind you that um, some of the most sustainable swag is not handing out anything at all, which doesn't cost anything and will actually be reflected um, in you know your emissions calculation. But great question. Uh, Tiffany asks, does the calculator provide emissions measurement for uh, greenhouse gases other than CO2, I would think that methane emissions would be particularly relevant for food or food and waste. It's a great question. And that is absolutely correct. Methane emissions are a big deal uh, for food and for landfill waste. We are calculating those methane emissions, but we're presenting uh, the output as a total CO2 E number, uh, not just CO2. So we're calculating emissions for all of the gases and then uh, compiling them into one final number for you. So that is accounted for um, in the emissions calculation. Uh, let's see here, just looking through these questions. Laura says, what, what does purchasing an offset event do? Are you signing up to participate or does it fund the event? Um, maybe we just need to clarify here, when we talk about purchasing offsets, what we're talking about are uh, you're having an event that has some amount of emissions, and then you would go and purchase carbon offsets to offset those emissions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Anastasia asks, how do you target event managers so they can plan their events accordingly to the best sustainable practices before they do something unsustainable? Uh, we do have some um, accompanying information within our blog on sustainable events. And, you know, part of it, part of the goal of this calculator is to let event managers be able to calculate the emissions of their events so they can understand, you know, what are the different impacts of the various things, uh, various activities within your event. One thing that you'll see if you use the calculator is the things that have the largest impact are things like travel, if people are flying to your event. And so I think that that helps putting numbers to those things helps event managers and event organized start to internalize um, the impacts of their different decisions. Okay. Um, I think those are most of the questions here. Um, yeah, we do have one here on do the attendees of the event get carbon offset certificates and how do they track the projects where they're funded? Um, the attendees of the event wouldn't necessarily get carbon offset certificates. It would be uh, you as the event host or the event organizer that would um, that would own that certificate and own those, be able to retire those offsets. I, I see Carrie here is asking a question specific to the foam offsets that we showed. Um, she asks, how does paying for foam actually offset to zero? Please explain. Um, so that was that's in relation to one of the specific offsets that are on our website now, which is foam uh, agent blowing substitution. And that offset is related to um, the use of polyurethane foam for things like home insulation, like spray foam. The blowing agents in that foam have a really high global warming impact. And so that offset project is about um, substituting lower GWP chemicals for those high GWP blowing agents. Okay. And looks like that's all of our questions. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And uh, we hope to see you in our app soon. Thank you.